What is up everyone? Welcome back to Great Ace TV and today I'm going to be talking about the mysterious disappearance of a man named Patrick Carnes. On April 13th of 2011, 86-year-old World War II veteran Patrick Carnes was driving along I-80 on his way back home to Reno, Nevada after visiting family in Ohio. And along for the ride was his dog, Lucky. And for the most part, the relatively long cross-country trip went pretty smoothly. But at approximately 9 p.m. that evening, Patrick was pulled over going westbound on I-80 near the town of Wells, Nevada by a highway patrolman. And he was pulled over for failing to change lanes when he passed by a highway patrolman who had pulled over another car. And just for a side note, I didn't actually know that that was something that you could get pulled over for. I just thought that it was like a common courtesy to go to the other side of the road if you could when a police officer was pulled over but I, I didn't know that, that was actually something that you could get pulled over and get a ticket for that's actually pretty interesting but anyway when Patrick was pulled over he told the police officer that the only reason why he didn't really change lanes was because he was following the truck driver in front of him and the major part of the conversation that everybody looks back on and talks about is this statement that I'm about to read right now I'll never drive at night again I'm only following him because he's going to Elko. And by the end of this video, you'll understand why that statement is something that people look back on and question. But eventually, Patrick was let off with a warning and he continued his journey back home. And although the highway patrolman obviously wouldn't have known this at the time, that was actually the last time that Patrick Carnes and his dog Lucky were ever seen again. And before I go any farther, I want to point out that this section of I-80 is pretty desolate. It's basically just road and desert surrounding it. And for anyone who lives in Nevada or is driven on that section of I-80, please feel free to tell the people in the comments what it's like to drive on that road, especially if you've driven on that road at night. So around nine hours later, just before 6 a.m., Patrick's Green Subaru station wagon was spotted 150 miles away at Pumpernickel Valley exit 205 near Winmucca. And I'm probably pronouncing that name wrong. I'm going to put the name right here so you guys can see it. I have no idea how to pronounce that name. I probably should have looked into how to pronounce that. But And when the car remained there for 48 hours, the police started an investigation and soon learned that the person who was driving that car never returned home from their cross-country trip. What made things even weirder was the fact that the car had plenty of gas, it seemed to be in good condition, and there were no signs of foul play. Yet Patrick and his dog Lucky were nowhere to be found. But beside the fact that Patrick and his dog couldn't be found, there is also something else very strange about the vehicle. Basically, it was facing the wrong way. The car was sitting on the south side of the highway, which was strange because since Patrick was traveling west, it would have made more sense for his car to be on the north side of the highway. So if you were just going by how the car looked, it would mean that at some point Patrick, for some reason, turned around and was heading back the opposite direction, which didn't make any sense to his family or the investigators, especially since there was a map found in the vehicle that had specific stops circled out, and none of those stops that were circled out was the stop that the car was found at. And this revelation caused Humboldt under Sheriff Curtis Cole to believe that there was some foul play involved in Patrick and his dog's disappearance. And he went on to state that he believed that the car was dumped in that location afterwards. A massive land and air search was launched of the surrounding desert terrain. And ground penetrating radar was even used to examine the many abandoned mines that dot the area. But no trace of Patrick or his dog were found. Not even footprints. It also didn't go unnoticed by police that this case bore a striking resemblance to the disappearance of a woman named Judith Casita five years earlier. And what made these cases so similar was the fact that they both involved elderly people who disappeared and both their cars were found in pretty much the exact same spot, just five years apart. But after looking into her story a little more, it would make more sense why she would disappear than why Patrick Carnes would disappear. And I'm saying that because she had just recently left her husband and no one really knows where she was headed. It's believed that she was going to visit family in Oregon at the time. But for someone to basically leave their life and just disappear into the desert, that's not something that hasn't happened before. And I'm not saying that that's what happened to her. I'm just saying that it makes more sense why she would disappear 
then why Patrick would disappear. And that's basically all that links these two cases together. The fact that both their cars are found in about the same location and that they both disappeared never to be seen again. I, I don't know if I believe, believe in coincidences, especially in this business. And, and to have this much real estate and to have two at the exact same location, matching circumstances, very strange. So there isn't a lot of leads or evidence to go on in Patrick's disappearance, but the one strong lead that the investigators had was what Patrick said to the officer when he was pulled over, which was that he was following a big rig because they were headed in the same direction. They were both headed to Elko. So of course, after investigators realized this, they went back to the dash cam footage to try to see if they could figure out who was driving that big rig. Because of course the driver of that big rig would be a person of interest since if you're just going off what Patrick told the police officer, you would think that Patrick and the truck driver had some sort of conversation for him to know where that truck driver was headed. So dash cam footage of the truck was analyzed basically frame by frame and the only clue they could find was a logo that was on the truck but unfortunately it was too blurry to actually figure out what that logo was. And unfortunately the big rig was the only clue that the police could go on. So other than that, there was nothing. And despite the hundreds of tips that came in over the years, none of them have led police to anything substantial. And there has never been any contact from the trucker who Patrick was following, which leads people to ask two questions. Does the truck driver have something to hide? Or did the truck driver not know that Patrick was following him? So if he didn't know Patrick was following him, why would he call in and say, hey, I'm the guy Patrick was following? I don't, he doesn't know who Patrick is. So there's two different routes you could go on. Either the truck driver knew that Patrick was following him, which you would think since he told the police officer that he was following this truck driver, specifically because that truck driver was headed to Elko. And the law enforcement and Patrick's family have been so desperate to find answers that they even turned to psychics just to get anything and they weren't able to get any new information from these psychics. And this is always something that I found interesting. There's been a couple cases that I went over where eventually the police or the family turned to a psychic to try and get more answers for what happened. And, and I know that some people do believe in psychics and it's just very interesting to me that people do turn to psychics, even the investigators turn to psychics when they really just don't have any answers for what's going on and they, they're just looking for anything. So that's very interesting that the investigators went as far as to contact psychics to get more information on what happened to Patrick. And unfortunately, Patrick and his dog Lucky were never seen again. And he was 86 years old at the time, and this happened in 2011. What was that, nine years? That would be nine years ago. 86 years old, he would be pretty up in age. The fact that there are only two options, either he was abducted or he walked into the desert to his death, there's not really a good chance that he's alive at this point. Um, which is unfortunate. But with all that being said, let's get into some of the theories on what might have happened to Patrick. So the first theory, and this is the theory that the undersheriff who investigated this case believes, Patrick fell into the clutches of a serial killer and was subsequently killed. The undersheriff believes that Patrick probably met this truck driver at a prior stop. And at some point after he was pulled over, Patrick was convinced by the truck driver to rest in his sort of sleeping compartment in the trucks. Because if you didn't know, the trucks actually have sleeping compartments. I didn't actually know that. I really just thought truck drivers just slept in their seats. But but the undersheriff's theory is that Patrick was eventually convinced by the truck driver to rest in his little bed compartment. And at some point, the truck driver murdered Patrick. And this theory was actually given credibility when it was found out through the family that Patrick actually used to be a truck driver. And since he had been a truck driver at one point in his life, he held a lot of respect and trust for other truck drivers. So it doesn't really seem that much out of the ordinary for Patrick to befriend a truck driver at a rest stop. And then later on, once he did get tired, trust that truck driver enough to get into his cab and rest, which unfortunately would make him an easy target for a truck driver with malicious intentions. Now, the second theory is that sometime that night, Patrick got turned around somehow and pulled over to the side of the road. And then there are several other theories on what would cause him to leave his car and go into the desert. One of those is that after he pulled over to the side of the road to check his map to try to figure out where he was, Lucky somehow got out of the car and maybe chased something into the night and Patrick ran behind him. And once he finally was able to catch up with him, he kind of didn't know where he was. I mean, 
He's in the middle of the desert. It's very dark. It makes sense that if his car lights were off and everything, and he ran into the desert, he wouldn't be able to actually find out where his car was parked. My only problem with this theory is that I just don't believe that Patrick would have gotten turned around in the night. This is a trip that he had made before. He had made plenty of other trips with his dog. He was also a truck driver at one point in his life. It just, it doesn't make sense to me that he would have just gotten that turned around in the night to where he would pull over in this location and then for some reason or another just walk into the desert at night. It, 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 it just doesn't, I can't comprehend why he would do something like that. Yes, people do make mistakes, so this very well could have happened. It could have easily happened. But I think the fact that Patrick's car was found in the almost exact same spot that another woman's car was found in five years earlier who had also mysteriously disappeared, I just think that that can't be a coincidence. There, there has to be more to it than that. But with that being said, like I said, Patrick could have easily, something could have happened to where he ended up in the desert and maybe he just wouldn't have been able to find the road because it was dark and he did get turned around but you would think that after all those air searching and things like that they would have been able to find his body and it probably wouldn't have been that far away from the road so the fact that he completely disappeared without a trace him and his dog even though his dog was said to have been spotted later on but that was it was never really confirmed that that was lucky just it just looked like lucky he very well could have just walked into the desert and just and got lost but let me know what you guys think about this do you think that he just got lost in the desert or do you think that something more heinous happened do you think that there is a serial killer that travels on i-80 and killing people somewhere let me know what you guys think right when you know a week before he left i am trying to keep the faith personally i have come to the realization that he may not be with us today we just want to know what happened dad was a good guy Mr. Carnes, to tell you the truth, reminds me a lot of my father uh, who passed, also a World War II veteran. You take it personal because you want to provide these folks with an answer. There has to be an answer to this. Uh, people don't just vanish. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Leave suggestions for other videos I should do. I do see those and I try to screenshot them and like them so if, if there's a heart if i heart your comment or like your comment then i saw it but like always hope you guys continue to have a great day great week great month great year and i will catch you next video